Hey, Jessica. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Good, good. So you have blessed us with your presence. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You're going to answer uncomfortable pet questions, and an expert's going to be doing it, and you're going to be that expert. How about that? Me? Yeah, you! Okay. <laughs> okay, so I've got some good questions for you today, and guys, you know, if you haven't listened to these uncomfortable pet questions, I even get embarrassed sometimes reading some of these questions, so I don't know how the heck Jessica answers these, <laughs> but, um, you know, the one thing, I, you had a great story the other day you wanted to tell me about a dog owner and I want you to share that at the end about a dog owner that had some problems with a dog jumping up on people constantly and how that got cured but anyhow let's get into the okay. pet questions first of and uh, I'll just jump right in is that okay let's do it all right cool somebody said all right this is what they put in the question somebody said it's important for me to oh I don't know how to put this delicately to check my dog's poop on a regular basis. Is that true? And why should I check my dog's poop? You know, before I answer that question, actually, it is so important. It doesn't matter how uncomfortable the question seems to you. You are your pet's advocate. You're your only pet. You're your pet's only advocate. So I don't care how uncomfortable a question is, always ask it especially when you're talking to a pet professional or your veterinarian like when you were just saying that um some of these questions are so uncomfortable and you don't know how i answer them just because the question is uncomfortable doesn't mean that it's not important to ask and doesn't mean that the answer is uncomfortable so always ask even the most uncomfortable of questions. So, uh, okay, so yes, absolutely. It is an uncomfortable thing to think about, the idea that you do need to be checking your dog's poop, but, or your cat, by the way, any animal that you are taking care of, it's a very important health indicator. So th this doesn't mean that you need to be like inspect, you know, putting on gloves and touching and inspecting every little aspect. That's not at all what I mean. But you do need to maintain some understanding of what a normal bowel movement is for your pet. The color, the consistency, uh, I mean, you, you want to make sure that you, you know what a normal bowel movement is for your pet. That way, when you notice an abnormal bowel movement, you can alert your veterinarian. And these are going to be some of, especially, especially with cats, they are amazing creatures at hiding the fact that they are sick. So oftentimes what you see in the litter box is going to be your first indication that something is going on with your pet. So definitely make sure you are maintaining a good level of understanding of what is normal for your pet. And just to clarify, cats are really good at hiding the fact that they are sick because they are not as domesticated as dogs are. So they still have a lot of wild cat characteristics ingrained in them. And one of those is that you cannot show weakness. Um, you are the first to, to be attacked by a predator if you are showing weakness. So cats will not show weakness if at all possible. All right, the next, are you ready for the next question? I am, that one wasn't that so was, bad. That was, yeah, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> it didn't stink like I thought it would. Okay, <laughs> so the next question, uh, how do I put this? Um, somebody put that they had left their little dog outside. It was a dachshund, okay? And when they came home, the German Shepherd next door had jumped over the fence and, well, how do I put this delicately, they were mating. So this particular pet owner wants to know, could a big dog like that German Shepherd get their little dachshund pregnant? Mm. The first thing I want to say is that uh, we should not be leaving our pets outside unattended. That's, that's a big no-no, um, but that's not the question. I just want to make sure I interject that. Um, the answer to your question is yes. While it is probably incredibly uncomfortable for your little dog to have gone through that, again, why we should not be leaving our pets unattended, um, they, they absolutely, they're the same species. They can impregnate one another. Just because of their size doesn't mean that one can't get the other pregnant. However, if your dog does get pregnant by a much larger dog, 
This is something you are going to want to have closely monitored the entire pregnancy with your veterinarian because these dogs, they, your, your little dog may be growing inside of her, are going to be much larger than her little body can handle. Um, pro, if she is even able to carry these puppies full term, uh, she probably will not be able to have them naturally and will need a C-section. So definitely if you even suspect your dog may be pregnant, take them to the veterinarian, let them know what's going on. It is a difficult, difficult pregnancy for a small dog, so uh, you will want to discuss all of that with your veterinarian. Very interesting. Huh, I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't think it was possible, but <laughs> I guess so. Now this next one is kind of interesting. This person has had a chihuahua for about six years it looks like now okay. and they've noticed something different the chihuahua used to just jump up on the couch run over jump up on the couch but now the chihuahua is approaching the couch and slowing down and kind of looking the couch up and down and they thought maybe the, the, the dog was just getting old but it looks like it's doing that with a lot of objects where it slows down when it gets in front of it like it can't see so the question is can dogs have vision problems? Now, of course, we all know dogs could go blind, but could they just have like near and far vision? And if so, is there anything that could be done about it? Yeah, dogs can have vision problems and all ranges of vision problems, including cataracts. Um, I mean, it, just like with humans, we're actually starting to see so many different issues in dogs specifically, but also in cats because of the diets that we have been feeding them over the past 60, 80 years. This is slowly starting to change um, formation during pregnancy. Um, there are a lot of different birth defects that are happening. So genetically related eye conditions can be some of those, but I definitely would recommend you going and talking to your veterinarian because it could be, uh, it could be anything from arthritis issues to vision issues to confidence issues. I mean, these are things that we need to think about too. Dogs are emotional creatures just like we are and something could have happened even something that that you may not know have had happened maybe they fell off of something and they are much more timid of jumping up on objects now so there are so many different things that could be going on I would recommend seeking out advice from your veterinarian so they can check uh, their eyes they can check their joints there are different things you can do there are things you can do there are you can increase and improve diet I'm not saying that that is definitely going to help with eyesight but it's certainly couldn't hurt. There are also different things with diet that you can do for joint issues and discomfort. Of course, there's um, some wonderful lines of CBD oils that are coming out now, which you definitely want to do your research on uh, because there are some good ones and there are some bad ones and there's a lot of in-between ones, but there are so many different things to, that you can do. And if it is a behavioral issue, if it's a confidence issue with your pet, of course, there are lots of different uh, positive reinforcement trainings that you can do to help your dog overcome that fear too. So, so many different things could be going on. The first thing you want to do is rule out medical issues. So definitely um, take your dog to see your veterinarian. Hey, are there doggy glasses? Could dogs actually wear glasses? Oftentimes your, veter your regular veterinarian will refer you to a doggy ophthalmologist and you can get a prescription from them to get uh, there's actually a company called Doggles, and I'm sure there are other companies as well. Depending on what you could get, you, you, you can spend a lot of money, you can maybe even spend as little as $100, but it really is going to be very much dependent on your dog's needs specifically and what you think your dog will and won't accept. Um, some dogs may not accept wearing goggles on their face and some dogs might, so you'll definitely wanna test it out for your specific dog. What I will do is put a link below for prescription doggles for dogs. Okay, Jessica, this one here, this question I thought was probably one of the best questions, so I saved it to last. And I'm still really interested in that story about you yeah. working with that family where the dog was jumping up on people. But I want to ask you this question because I think this could help a lot of people. Right now, you know, we're in the midst of this COVID thing. A lot of people are home alone and they're doing activities that may not be the best in their interest. So in other words, that maybe they're overeating, maybe they're over drinking, some people are doing drugs, sleeping pills, whatever, because they really feel cooped up. But this person wants to know because they heard that dogs can actually help with depression in humans. How do you feel about that and do you think that's a good idea? 
You know, every situation is different. Dogs absolutely can help people with depression because well, for so many reasons. They're wonderful companions. They love unconditionally and they also provide a sense of responsibility for that person. And really, without going into too much detail in this one video, a lot of research is suggesting that the reason people, especially in Western civilization, are becoming so depressed at such an increasing rate is because we are so self-absorbed. The best way to not be depressed is to do things for others. So if you have a pet, you can't spend 100% of your time wallowing in self-pity. And I'm not saying that 100% of depression is, is related to um, not doing things for others, but because sometimes it is, there are genetic factors to it. But a lot of it is because we, in, just in today's society, we have become so self-absorbed and everything is about us and what we want right here, right now. And when we start focusing less on ourselves and more on others, those feelings of depression start to go away because we are, we have a purpose, right? So when you have a pet, you have a purpose, you have a responsibility, you are doing, you are caring for something other than yourself. And that is so incredibly important. And again, I don't want to um, take too much time in this video to talk specifically about that because there are lots of other experts about depression that can <laughs> that can um, tell you more about that but having a pet can definitely help boost your mood not just because again you have something else to take care of other than yourself you have that sense of responsibility but because they are companions because they do love unconditionally. And so, yeah, absolutely. Now, I'm not saying that everyone with a mental health disorder should go out and get a pet. Absolutely not. It'd Every, be crazy, wouldn't it? it, it yeah, <laughs> it would be crazy. But um, uh, because not everybody is fit is well enough to be able to care for another um, living being. But if you are able, if, if you are physically and mentally able to care for another being and take on that responsibility, they absolutely can add so much to your life. I'll also put a link in the description to a study that was done that proved that dogs not only know when you're upset or not feeling well, but they will actually do things to try to improve your mood. So I will put a link to that study in the description below. Okay, Jessica, I've, I've just been waiting here and I've been just, I'm, I just gotta hear the story about this dog because I've seen this before where dogs will jump up on their owners and you were able to prevent this dog from jumping up on their owners, people who visited, and uh, it, could, could you share that with uh, the listeners and viewers right now? Because I'm sure there's somebody out there that has that same issue. I think there are a lot of people that have this issue. And I actually have a video all about jumping in my beginner dog training series. The link to that playlist is in the description below. Um, I do want you to start from the beginning. Don't jump directly to the jumping video. Uh, start from the beginning. There is a reason why the videos were done in the order they were done in, but really, the key thing to understand about jumping, and I did, I, you know, especially with big dogs, the thing with jumping is that little dogs jump just as much as the big dogs do, but because they're so tiny and they're so little, people tend to overlook it and they don't train for it. So it doesn't matter what type of dog you have, you definitely want to work with your dog on this behavior because it is unbecoming. So I specifically had a Husky who was jumping and Huskies are big, even when they're little, even when they are, you know, six, seven, eight, nine months old, they're still pretty darn big dogs. And it was getting a little bit too much because I mean, when you have a small person, like, I mean, even me, I'm a fairly small individual, um, and you have a large dog jumping on you, it, it's difficult, right? And the last thing we want, my whole goal, my the purpose of everything I do, the reason why I became a dog trainer is because I don't want dogs going to shelters for things that is completely out of their control. Like, they're just being dogs, and they're being surrendered because people don't know what to do, or they just think they they can't handle it anymore. Like these, to me, I, I mean, these are senseless reasons why dogs are being um, 
abandoned basically and it's it's unfortunate so i don't want to see this happen i don't i want people to have resources at their disposal and know and have confidence that they can manage their dogs and and have their dogs live with them happily and harmoniously and stay in their loving homes and live out their lives that's my purpose that's my goal um so when we have dogs especially large dogs that are jumping it can create a problem and with this particular person it had created a big problem for her to where she was trying to figure out if she was going to rehome her dog or what she was going to do and that's not the goal right like if you can provide a loving forever home with a dog then there is no reason you should be giving them up so we definitely had to help her out and the whole key here with jumping and I, and I can't really go into this um, too in detail in this one little video but definitely check out the beginner dog training series uh, again that playlist is linked in the description below but basically what we want to do is take that they they have learned a behavior that somebody comes to the door or somebody comes in my home and I jump on them because I want to greet them and they're happy and they're just I mean they're not doing it to be mean they're doing it because they want to greet you and they're happy so we want to take that that behavior and redirect it to a more appropriate behavior so we want to teach them to do something else in place of the jumping behavior that they're doing and that's what we did in this particular instance and fortunately i mean and most dogs are incredibly smart take to training incredibly incredibly quickly as long as you're doing it appropriately and you're rewarding the behaviors that you want to see in your dog which is what we did and now her dog when she comes home sits and stays and as soon as she is ready to greet her dog and has seen that her dog is doing what they're supposed to be doing and sitting and staying now she can go greet her dog and release her release her dog from the sit and they can play and have fun and go out and potty and whatever else needs to be done because she just got home so um taking a situation from frown to a smile is always a wonderful thing and uh you know fortunately for that particular client of mine, it happened pretty quickly. And as long as you remain positive and consistent, um, it can happen quickly for you too. Hey, Jessica. <laughs> I know a lot of people are wanting to get more information to help them and their pets. How could they get more information from you? Do you have some more resources? Um, what do you have? Yeah, so I actually have quite a few resources for you. I do have a book and it is the foundation of everything I start with. I teach my in-home clients this foundational material before we move on to anything else. So you can grab a digital copy of the book. It is linked in the description below. Uh, I also have online courses. So if you need additional information or something really specific is going on with your dog, uh, online video training courses. So I literally on video walk you through everything you need to be doing. It is so incredibly easy to follow along with. I will link that in the description as well. And I also have a group so you can join the family. There are thousands of other pet parents in this group. You can share the wins. You can ask for help if you're frustrated with something, if you're working on something with your dog let us know and uh, I can help you as well as some other really wonderful pet parents in the group can help you and that is a completely free resource I have all kinds of files on different um, some of the most commonly asked questions in the group all free to you that is also linked in the description below so go ahead and join there as well all right great thank you so much for sharing guys thank if you've you got questions um, that you want to ask Jessica, you can put it in the comment section there, go to one of our groups. I mean, the comment section here is best. You know, let us know if you're having some issues so that she can answer the questions you have in the next Uncomfortable Questions About Your Pet with a Pet Expert. Thanks so much for listening. Jessica, you want to tell them goodbye? Yes, thank you so much for being here. And do post your questions in the comments below, or even if you have a comment on one of the questions and answers that we did in this video, make sure to leave that below. And uh, give this video a thumbs up because YouTube really likes that. And if you are new here, first of all, if you're not new here and you are returning to my channel, thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you but if you are new here if that subscribe button right down there if you look right down there and that subscribe button is red click it it'll turn gray and then a bell will appear click the bell select all notifications that way youtube can notify you every time i post a new video also 
before you leave. There is going to be another video popping up right about here and it is going to help build that bond and relationship between you and your dog. So I highly recommend you check out that video next. Thank you so much for being here with us today on this episode of Uncomfortable Questions and I will see you in the next video.